I had always heard horror stories about psychedelics, but based on my experiences with them, I had always assumed that these were either highly exaggerated or just plain false until I lived through one last Saturday. To start with some background, I am an 18 year old male with a fair amount of experience with psychedelics. Sometime in April, I acquired 50 tabs of 25C NBOME at a dose of 1000 micrograms through the Silk Road. Between then and last Friday, I had used those tabs on five separate occasions with five different people, and they had all proved to be thoroughly enjoyable experiences. For those of you that don't know, 25C NBUME is a hallucinogenic drug with effects somewhat similar to LSD. My mom was going to be out of town for the weekend, so I decided to have some friends over on Saturday, June 14th to hang out and trip. Three people besides me were there, and for the sake of anonymity, I will be using fake names. First was my girlfriend, who we will call Christy, who had tripped twice before this. Next was my closest friend, who we will call Carl, who had tripped four to five times before this. And last was a good but not super close friend, who we will call X, who claimed he had previous experience. They all came over around 11 a.m., and we just started off by smoking a few bowls and talking till about noon, when we decided to take the tabs. Everyone present took one tab sublingually and held it in for approximately 45 minutes to an hour. X made remarks of feeling it as quickly as 20 minutes in, when it usually takes me 45 minutes to an hour to feel any effects. To start, we were all laying on a couch listening to music and watching a light show on my ceiling. Up until about an hour and 20 minutes in, X was enjoying himself very much, commenting on how good his body felt and how much he liked the music. At around an hour and 20 minutes in, Christy and I decided to eat Warheads as the extreme sour is very intense and fun while tripping. We offered one to X, which noticeably freaked him out and confused him. We told him he didn't have to eat one if he didn't want to, and I went to sit down when X suddenly got up and began hurrying up the stairs. I asked him where he was going, to which he replied, Are you guys fucking with me? Is it cool? Neither Carl, Christy, or I had any idea what he was talking about, but we asked him to sit back down, which he did. At this point, I decided to turn the music off and began asking if he was okay. X didn't really respond to my questions. He was looking in my direction, but not at my face, and he began having a conversation with me about how he always felt that we were connected in some way. I was confused and did not respond, but he kept going as if I had. It began to bother me, as it was almost as if he was talking to a non-existent person right behind me. I decided at this point that I better ask for his keys and phone. He gave up the keys with no trouble, but getting his phone was a bit of a struggle. This is when I knew things were definitely bad. After I had his keys and Christy had taken his phone, he kept babbling about not wanting to go all the way and not wanting to make any deals and nonsensical cryptic things like that. Eventually, he ended up calling us the Cosmic Four, which at first we all laughed at as we figured he was joking, but then we realized he really believed we were some sort of super team. He assigned various attributes to all of us and began talking about things we had been through that had never actually happened. As this went on, we continuously tried to get him to focus and remember real things, but it was to no avail. As he went on, his ramblings became less and less sensical. He kept referring to himself as Father Reason and talked about how he always brought the balance. He was talking to us as if he thought we were all aspects of his personality inside his head. Then his strange stories adopted an odd religious vibe. X referred to different areas of my basement as heaven and hell, my dog as Lucifer, and my dog's ball as the apple of Eden, and Christy as Eve. He also began referring to the six people in the room when there were only four. He also began referring to Carl as Ares and thought the house was full of the personifications of lust, debauchery, greed, and other things like that. Throughout all these talks, we kept trying to get him focused on reality and reminding him he had taken the drug. He stayed strangely grounded to reality and able to remember real things, but he would never focus on them long. 
After about two hours, we gave up on talking him down, and I decided to attempt to divert his attention. First, I asked if he wanted to play Call of Duty, to which he replied, Come on guys, we always do that. This was the first time the four of us had hung out. So then I tried watching Adventure Time, which I knew was a favorite show of his. When I asked if he had a specific episode he wanted to watch, he responded as if the numbers had something to do with how the future would turn out. Eventually, I just picked a random one. While it was playing, both Christy and Carl used the bathroom at different times, and their movements seemed to freak X out. He kept talking over the show about how we were bringing on a new age, and how we needed to discuss what we were going to do differently this time. It was such stereotypical Illuminati type stuff that I swore for a while he was fucking with us. After two episodes, I had to take my dog out to go to the bathroom, and this is where shit really hit the fan. When I came back, X asked why everyone but him could go upstairs, and I explained that if he had to go to the bathroom, I'd go up with him just to make sure he didn't break anything. After I explained that, he began yelling that he wasn't making any fucking deals, and Christy and Carl said it looked like he was about to punch me. I told him I wasn't trying to make any deals, and we began to head upstairs. At 4.07, as soon as we got to the top, X bolted for the door, tried to throw it open, found it locked, frantically unlocked it, threw it open, and ran down my street yelling, HELP ME! at the top of his lungs. Mind you, we are in a residential neighborhood in broad daylight. Holy fuck, I had to get my dog inside as he ran outside, and then Christy, Carl, and I freaked the fuck out. We began thinking of every possible thing we could do, then eventually called X's friends, who we will call Sam and Jack, who agreed to drive up and come look for him. They got to my house, we explained the situation, and they drove around looking for him to no avail. They came back to my house for a bit, but became nervous when a large group of people were standing in the street outside my house and decided to leave. The people were evidently just talking as they eventually left. At this point, three hours had passed since he left without his shoes, phone, or keys, and we had no idea what to do. Then my phone rang. It was my friend who works at the fire department. He worriedly asked if I was okay, and I told him I was, and he explained that he was with X, who had gotten the police called on him numerous times and had been found in his boxer somewhere in the woods. X told the cops that he thought that he had OD'd, and the cops had taken him in for testing, and after his vitals came back okay, they took him home as the drug was almost out of his system. He evidently didn't give the cops any names or addresses, and I'm so grateful he ended up okay. We drove his car to a parking lot close to my house and let him know all of his stuff was in it. I have not spoken with him since then, so I do not yet have his side of exactly what happened. I guess what to take from all this is while I'm the last person to tell you not to do hallucinogenic drugs, just keep in mind that this stuff evidently really does happen and to be careful, especially with research chemicals.